Hello and welcome back to Mysteries of the Kingdom of Heaven. My name is Raj Singh. This is part two of a two-part series where we look at if God is a capitalist or a communist. In part one, we looked at the ten virgins. In this part two, we'll be looking at the servants with the talents. Remember, Yeshua speaks in parables. If you like these videos, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Matthew 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. What does verse 15 mean? It means that not every one of us has the same level of ability. And just to give an example, um, we all at one time wanted to be a many of us, not all, but be great sportsmen. But how many got there? Uh, verse 16, um, then he that had received the five talents went and traded. To trade, you're straight away a capitalist. With the same, he was in business and made them, an, uh, made them other five talents. So he had 100% profit. And likewise, he that had received two, so likewise, so he traded as well. So again, they're both capitalists. They're into business, and so therefore they're trading and making profit. And he, he also gained another two, so he made 100% profit as well. Verse 18, but he that had received one, he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his money, his Lord's money. So what does this mean? Verse 18, that he hid the, his Lord's money. Servant number three, the one with, which was given one talent because the Lord knew his ability. And so he tested him with just one. What did it show? It showed that that servant with one talent could not handle money. Money handled that servant. The servant that he gave to uh, five talents to, he knew, the Lord knew that this talent would be a great businessman. He could handle five talents. And so he was handling money. Money was not handling him. And likewise, the servant with two talents, he knew that that servant, that was his, what his ability was. And so he gave him two. And so again, he handled money. Money did not handle him. So that is what happens when as yes, example, if you get on a horse, either the horse handles you or you handle the horse. Let us see the meaning of the word talent. Number one, a special natural ability or aptitude. Number two, the cap capacity for achievement for or success ability. Number three, a talented person. We're going to go down to six, a power of mind or body considered as given to a person for use and improvement. So, so call from the parable of Matthew 25, 14 to 30. So it's amazing how the dictionary, which we've gone right through, connects us straight to the Holy Bible. So I encourage you to read the Bible with a dictionary. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord, which is God, of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. Now again, you look at that word, reckoneth with them, and you just move to the next verse. 
Not so. Let's look at the word reckon. To count, compute, or calculate, as in number or amount, leads straight to numbers, which straight to profit. Have you been profitable? And so do not disregard these words and just move to the next verse. We got to see, we got to hear, and we got to understand. Verse 20. So he that had received five talents came and brought and other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now, if this was a communist God, he would have said, now I'm going to tax you and I'm going to take a portion of what you have created and I am going to share it. But we can see that instead of taking it from him, God has added to him. Verse 22, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. Verse 23, the Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Again, when you are fruitful, God blesses you. He did not take away from this servant with two talents. He added onto him, and so proving that God is a capitalist, not a communist. So we go to Matthew 25, verse 24, the servant with one talent. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Verse 25, and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Now why would God call this servant wicked after all he didn't lose the money he kept it quite safe and he returned it the other two servants made a hundred percent profit they were fruitful which we found meant profitable and so while he had not lost anything he made no attempt to even try to increase what he had. And so God called him wicked, wicked. That's not a light word that God used. Matthew 25 verse 27, we are going to break it down uh, by bits. Uh, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges. When you read this, God is clearly telling us, teaching us how to handle his money. God says, my money. God is saying that the money you have is his money. So whatever you, you may have, he wants you to invest it and not just sit on it. Whatever gifts and talents God has blessed you with, he does not want you to waste it. He goes on to say that, Then at my coming I should have received mine 
own with usury. So what that means is mine own with that whatever he gave you, the principal, which was the dollar plus interest. Now, if you read that as it says, that is a capitalist system. Okay, now we go to verse 28. God then says, take therefore the talent from him, from the one, the servant with one talent, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. Why did God take the talent from the servant with one talent and give it to the servant with ten talents? Why didn't he give it to the servant with ten? Four talents. After all, they both increased their return by a hundred percent. The reason God gave it to the servant with ten talents was because God wants maximum return on investment. And the servant with the ten talents had the greater ability. Remember, God gives according to your ability. When you personally invest your money, would you give your money to the bank of servant one, two, or three? We would give our money to the bank of servant one. As we are made in the image of God, and just like God, we want maximum return on investment. If servant number three was wise, he would himself go to servant number one and say, I have one talent. Can you invest this for me and double my money? We're still on Matthew 25 verse 27 and 28. If God was a socialist transitioning to communism, God would have said to the servant with ten talents and the servant with four talents, as each of you have doubled your money, it is fair that you share your wealth with the servant with one talent. Likewise, God would have told the five wise virgins to share the oil that they purchased with their own money with the five foolish virgins. Remember, they had to purchase the oil with money, which is capitalism, as nothing comes for free. God would have allowed the five foolish virgins on the grounds of mercy, compassion, and grace to enter into the marriage and the kingdom of heaven. Likewise, for the servant with one talent, God would have said to him that your concerns were justified. You did not lose the one talent. So I will still reward you by making the profitable servants share their wealth with you. But God never did this. Instead, God literally fired the five foolish virgins and the servant with one talent by sending them to hell. If you cannot handle your gifts and talents and your money, then those gifts and talents and that money controls you and it is of no use with you. You will see how you yourself will willingly, happily give your money away. No one will come to you. No one will go to the fools and impose taxes and coerce you to hand their money over. However, the government does tax anyone who makes more money. For example, if you work overtime on your wage, the penalty, the tax that they hit you with, the government imposes on you, 
discourages you to work hard, which is counter to what God's system is. Why are you discouraged to work extra and make extra? Because it is a socialist transitioning to communism. The government wants to make sure you don't realize you don't need government. For the socialist communist leaning political parties, they want to be your Jehovah Jireh instead of God. Verse 29, for unto everyone that hath shall be given. What does it mean, uh, unto everyone that hath shall be given? It means that everyone is given equal opportunity based on God giving you according to your ability. God is a God of equal opportunity. And it goes on, he and he shall have abundance. We saw that the servants with five and two talents, they received abundance. The wise will not start off wealthy, but they will end up wealthy. In verse 29, God goes on to say, But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. What does this mean? That he will be it shall be taken away even that which he hath. It means that God is not a God of equal outcome, which proves God is a capitalist, as he is a God of equal opportunity, not of equal outcome, simply because the fools, not the poor, but the fools will squander away their wealth, gift, and talents. This is not about the rich and the poor. You can look at every field. If sportsmen, entertainers, blue-collar workers, white-collar workers, etc., etc., it applies to every career path that you can think of. Likewise, in every field of employment that you can think of, if you become a burden to the system, the system will fire you, which leads us to verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We can see here that God literally fires the fools by sending them to hell. God's principle is equal opportunity not equal outcome. So if you feel the rich get richer, then you are wrong. It is the wise that get richer. The wise sportsman, the wise entertainer, the wise blue collar worker, the wise in every field, career field that you can think of, are the ones who receives abundance. The majority of these start off poor. By knowing this, you can tell which political party is God's party and which is Satan's party. The party that pushes equal outcome is Satan's party, which is the party of communism. And that is why wherever communism is practiced, it always fails and has disastrous effects on the common people. While God is a God of equal opportunity and a God which stands for capitalism. 
And wherever capitalism is practiced, that country flourishes. Okay, now here is the proof that fools will hand back their hard-earned money to the wise and be none the wiser. We're going to use the example of the purchase of a car as it has a significant impact. However, the end result is the same. Every dollar you lose, it takes you three times in value and three times in time to recover, which means you never recover. Purchase of a car on the, right, on the left hand side, valued say 20,000 with a five year loan. Uh, let's say we put a deposit down of 5,000 and we need to borrow $15,000. So the loan of 15,000 plus interest just at 5%, equals $750 per year times five years equals $3,750. The cost of a car at $20,000 plus $3,750 is $23,750. Now, if you're starting off in life, hey, this is nothing. However, the car costs you $10,000 a year to run times five years equals $50,000. The total cost of the car in five years is now $73,750. If you're starting off in life, this is a major cost. Now, if you're wise enough to see it, you will find work closer because will you recover this money from your wages? You start off earning money at about twenty-three to 30000 a year, so a car will pretty much um, uh, cancel that employment uh, if you need that car for that job. So uh, you ha if you're wise, you will say, I'm going to use public transport or I'm going to find work closer to home. So we go to the right-hand side. In five years, you would have paid off a total of 73000 $750. And the fact is, you don't even realize that. If you are wise, you will realize that. And I'm hoping this will um, awaken and make you realize. It will take you another five years, provided you're wise, to save $73,750. Most of them will say, I'm debt free now, and now I have this surplus to spend. And if you go into that category, then you have totally um, uh, fooled yourself. Now you look at point three. It will take you another five years to catch up to where you would have been had you not got the car in the first place. This means in point four that you will lose whatever you lose sets you back three times in time and three times in money. Point five, therefore, three times in time is 15 years. And point six, three times in money equals $221,250. Point seven, this means you never recover and you always live week to week, not understanding why you don't have much every week. Now, had you invested that money in shares, if that's your gift, or in a property, your value would have increased, doubled every 10 years uh, in property, yes. Now, the car depreciates in value, so that $20,000 car in 15 years is now worth $2,000. So, the other part that comes in is in by the 15th year, that $20,000 car now needs to be replaced. And so the cycle continues. And so you can see why does a five-year car loan set you back 15 years? And that is why. Now, just to uh, make a point about this, that when you're starting off in life, not when you have made it in life, and now you've got an abundance. But when you're starting off in life, and let's say at the age of 19, 20, whatever, 
you had managed to save twenty thousand dollars and so you will say oh no this doesn't apply to me well it still does because the only thing that you would have saved was the five percent interest which totaled three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars the rest of the calculations less 3750 still applies and it still applies that in 15 years uh, more than likely the car needs to be replaced so be aware of your gifts and talents and of the money you have and use them wisely from matthew 25 verse 29 we can see for unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance so everyone gets an equal opportunity but from him, him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath and we can see that you willingly yourself you give it away willingly nobody comes and pressures you uh, james this leads us to james 4 verse 3 ye ask and receive not because you ask amit amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust now you can see tens of thousands of dollars has gone where upon your lusts you received it but you got that wealth but then you yourself um, uh, took it away now in another video we will see how to ask a hit instead of a miss now once you've uh, created your wealth then go for it and spend that money and do the things but do it with wisdom so why did god tell the five foolish virgins and the servant with one talent i know you not depart from me this leads us to genesis 1 verse 27 god created man in his own image from Genesis 1, we saw how God himself, a creator, from the universe to the smallest of details on earth, was fruitful and he multiplied. And as we are made in the image of God, if we are a copy of God, we are to also be fruitful and multiply with our creations verse 28 and god blessed them and said unto them be fruitful and multiply just like i have myself been if man's only purpose in life was to do nothing but have babies then we have failed as there is not a single man alive from adam who has done nothing but have babies does a big god with big plans need to instruct man to do what is natural or does a big god with big plans need to instruct man to do big things and multiply like their god we're still at Genesis 1 verse 27 and 28. If you know the Bible from Genesis 1, God started from nothing and he was fruitful and he multiplied and created everything. Likewise, man who is wise, poor and wise, because God started off poor, he had nothing that was poor and then he created everything and now he had everything likewise if we start off with nothing and we are wise from nothing we will make something and that is the capitalist way if god was communist if he was a communist he would not have handed over dominion on earth to man he would have run it himself but he gave it to Adam and he said, now you run everything and you look after it and you manage it. But I want a profit from whatever you do. To recap, the meaning of fruitful, producing good results 
beneficial, profitable. Uh, point three, producing an abundant growth as of fruit. So I've underlined profitable leads us to profit, a pecuniary gain resulting from employment of capital in any transaction. Compare gross profit, net profit. Uh, point C, returns, proceeds, or revenue as from property or investments. Uh, number two, the monetary surplus left to a producer or employer after deducting wages, rent, cost of raw materials, etc. To explain this, if you are employed, your employer needs to make a profit off you after he pays for all of his expenses. Otherwise, you will be a burden to the system. And if you cost more than the goods and services he provides, then he will have no choice but to fire you. Likewise, the five foolish virgins and the servant with one talent was a burden to the system. And God literally fired them as they are a bottomless pit that will never fill. We are made in the image of a God that overflows. And so must we. The word of God has proved that God is a capitalist. To remove any doubt, we will go to Genesis 1 verse 29. And God said, Behold, I, I, him, just one, one, has given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. So what is God saying? He's saying that I, God, am providing you with all the provisions you need. And for you to consume his provisions and simply waste them by consuming them and not being productive, while others go in want, in genuine want, is not what God considers a worthy principle. And just like the employment situation, if you are a burden, no one can employ you. And just like that, you're fired, and so does God fire you. To prove this, look, let's look at the servant with the five talents. He created another five, and so now he's got a total of ten. Uh, the servant with two talents created two more, and so he's got a total of four. This gives a grand total of an extra seven talents. Since the servant with one talent created zero, the communist system would be to tax the wise to give to the fool. And so what they would have said is, okay, we're going to charge a percentage based on what level of income you're earning. And so we divide that by three, and now everyone gets 2.33. Now the servant with two talents would be enticed and say, hey, I got uh, extra, a third extra for not doing much work. And the servant with five, he would be, hey, I'm being cheated. I have now got less. Um, but the clear winner out of this is the servant with one talent who from nothing has just pocketed 2.33. Now, we can see from God's capitalist system, he says, forsake the fool. So he just discards them, walks away, abandons, and he lets the five uh, the servant with five talents keep what he's got and the servant with two talents keep what he's got because the servant with two talents does not deserve to get what the servant with five 
talents was able to create. Which leads us back to Matthew 25, verse 20. And so he that had received five talents, let's skip to, I have gained besides them five talents more. Verse 21, his Lord said unto him, well done. Uh, skip to, I will make thee ruler over many things, many things. Verse 22, he also that had received two talents, skip to, I have gained two other talents besides them. Verse 23, his, led, his Lord said unto him, well done. We skip to, I will make thee ruler over many things. We see God made th these two servants rule over many things. What do you rule over? You rule over properties. So is it one property, two property? No, there are many properties that God has given to these two servants to manage. And so it's, the word of God has proved that God is a capitalist. In summing up, the difference between capitalism and communism is that in the communist slash socialist system that we really are living in Western democracies, is that the government, which has no idea how to create wealth, leave alone how to manage wealth, knows better than the ones who create wealth how to spend the wealth you knew how to create. Communism is a one political party system which collects all the money of everyone and they will distribute, as they say, they know how to better spend the wealth you knew how to create. Nobody in the communist system is allowed to get ahead unless you are within the party. And should you fall out of the party doctrine, you will be cut off immediately. Compared with God's capitalist system, you reap what you sow, and the greater you sow, the greater you reap. And in God's capitalist system, the hand that created the wealth is the best who knows how to spend that wealth. People have been sold the lie to despise those who have reaped a lot without understanding that not a single person alive would not want to be in the shoes of the ones who have reaped a lot. But they also fail to understand that those who have reaped a lot have done exactly what their God, whose image they are made in, expects of them. So instead of despising those who have reaped a lot, be wise and not the fool. So you too can reap as much as the ones you are made in the image of. Job is a perfect example of this. While not to make a misunderstanding uh, that there are a lot of evil corporations who are doing wicked things, now, this I'm talking about is the individual and not those who have become corporations and have stepped outside and are using that wealth for wicked purposes. You've been watching Mysteries of the Kingdom of Heaven. My name is Raj Singh. This is the end of the two-part series where we found through the Word of God that God is a capitalist. He wants you to be creative and from nothing He wants you to create and have abundance. If you like these videos, like, share, comment and subscribe. Remember, you don't need me, you don't need man, you just need to seek the Holy Spirit. These videos are made to encourage you to read the Bible in a different way. Matthew 13, verse 10, and the disciples asked Yeshua why he speaks to the people in parables. 
In verse 11, Yeshua answers and said to the disciples, because it is given to you, disciples, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, which we now know means any truth unknowable except by divine revelation. Yeshua goes on to say in verse 11, but to the people it is not given. In verse 12, we see that Yeshua says, For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, given the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And he shall have more abundance of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But for whosoever hath not, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven will be taken away. Likewise, we saw with the talents, the same applies in Matthew 25, that, that you will get abundance of your gifts, talents, and wealth, or if you cannot handle them, he will take it away. In fact, you will yourself give it away without even you knowing about it. In verse 13, Yeshua therefore says, I speak to the people in parables because they seeing, see not, hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. So if you like these videos, like, share, comment, and subscribe. God bless.